Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis was a part of a band called Flight Time. They were just as good as Grand Central. Prince didn't like that. Moore's Day looked at it as, okay, well, we may have times where we're at the Battle of the Bands at the same time. We may be playing at the same time at high school dances, talent shows, whatever the case may be. But they are my brothers in music, okay? Prince, again, fuck them niggas. <laughs> done so please make sure that you like share and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube and if you do not have a retirement slash investment plan in place through your employer please check out the acorn app below it will change your life now, now let's talk about Morris days on time a princely life in fun so guys, just, I don't know why, but for some reason, I have been thinking about uh, Morris Day a lot. You know, I don't, I don't know why, but he's been on my mind a lot. I don't know, right? When I found out that he has a book coming out, I was like, oh yeah, I must review this, okay? So I'm excited, more excited than what you guys out there listening to this could ever be, okay? Because I am a huge Prince fan. I'm, actually, you know what? I'm more of a Time fan than I am a Prince fan, but guess what? Some of you Prince fans are going to be pissed off because the way that he writes the book, he writes the book like, okay, I'm writing it down, and Prince is like sitting across from him and going, nobody wants to hear about that. Hurry up and get to me. It works like he's writing his book, and Prince is right there being controlling over the book the same way that he was controlling over Moore's Day's career. I'm telling you, this book is juicy. I am engulfed, I am excited, and I can't wait to hear you guys' feedback on it. But let's get into it. So how the book opens up, he says that he was born December 13th, 1956, in Springfield, Illinois. Child, guess what? I didn't know that Springfield, Illinois was a real place. If it ain't in a DMV, nigga, I don't know. But it is. I thought it was just a place that the Simpsons lived, okay? I, I didn't know. So right? By the time that he came around, his mother and father were divorced. His pappy went out there to Germany and found him an old lady and... Married her and had a couple of more kids. So he got a couple more half-siblings out there somewhere. I don't know if he's going to talk about them in the book. I don't know, but we will see. Then he goes on to a part where he's talking to Prince about their daddy issues. He's telling Prince, look, we both got daddy issues. However, my issues is different from yours. You got daddy issues with your pappy. I got daddy issues with my step-pappy. What he explains is that his father was a whole nigga, but his father did give him his best friend in the world, his younger brother, Jesse. Now, by 1960, when his brother Jesse was born, his mother is now a registered nurse. And his pappy is a nigga. He's abusive and he's a gambler. But... What Morris Day does say is that his mother wasn't just sitting there taking them punches. She was pap 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 powering his ass back. Power to the people. She was giving him the nigga back. Ooh, yes, I love it when women fight back. Yes, black girls rock. Black girl magic. Black girl magic. I'm not, I'm not condoning abuse in no type of way, but all I'm saying is when you got it in you to fight back, baby, you got it in you to walk away. The stepfather was really mean to Morris Day. And how he explains it is that because his mother was pretty much the breadwinner of the home, she was out of the home a lot because she was an RN and she had to work. Her, his step-pappy was around here drinking, gambling, you know, beating up Barbie dolls and everything else while his mother had to basically take care of the household. The problem was when the mother left, uh, Morris Day would be like, no, mommy, please don't leave me here. The mother had to leave to take care of the house bills. Look, baby, I got to work. I got to take care of things, right? So as soon as the mother would leave out the door, the step-pappy would smack him in the face and call him a punk. So this is where he goes on to talk about how his maternal 
grandfather was a pimp. And when they would go to church on Sunday, his mother would dress him like a pimp. I said, oh, is that the reason why he dressed like that? Because I was confused. He wasn't like Prince where he dressed in extra feminine. What he was like was, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's how they dress in Minneapolis. I don't freaking know. I'm still confused about why he dressed like that. Like a zoot suit pimp. But that's A, it worked for him. It wasn't like, I wasn't like, ooh, Morris Day. I was like, ooh, I love Morris Day. I loved Morris Day. If you love Prince, I love Morris Day. Maybe because he's a Sagittarius, you know. I love me old good fire sign, child. But eh, we ain't talking about me and my loins right now. He goes on to talk about house parties. Anybody that was born from 1980 on back, you know how as children we enjoyed house parties. We loved peeking out the door, looking at how um, them damn adults be out there acting a whole fool, being drunk, smoking cigarettes or whatever it is, you know, they were smoking, but we was to stay in a daggone room, okay? And sometimes what we would do is pour all the drinks together and drink it and act like we getting drunk. We might have been drunk, but the shit really tastes like cigarette butts because we ain't had no reason to, you know, be drinking on that stuff anyway, you know? Child, it was fun. It was great. So I'm glad that he talked about the good part and not made it seem like it was just this bad, horrible time in his life, you know, because sometimes some people will just make it seem like all they ever, you know, life of me ain't been no crystal stairs. And for real, they're forgetting about the good times. So he was being fair, right. but it didn't matter because his, his step happy was a still a nigga and he was still acting a fool, so you know the mother next step, right? You know the mother next step. She like, oh, I'm about to uh, get my babies and me the hell up out of here. So by 1964, the mammy is sneaking around trying to pack things now, you know. I mean, all I'm saying is, ladies, if you in distress at home, it ain't nothing wrong with giving that nigga a couple of gulps of Benadryl. Put it, he, if he a drinker, put that shit in his drink. Hey, baby, here goes some crown. Throw a half a bottle of goddamn Benadryl down there, and you could pack up the whole goddamn house. Matter of fact, you could rob his ass. 1964. They got the hell up out of that house. I don't know what the hell, but she did it up underneath his nose and he didn't know what the hell. They was like scavengers in the night and they got the hell away from that nigga. Strong J, baby girl. Strong J. Now, this is where Prince jump in again and say, when you gonna talk about me? Talk about me. Most they say, chill, Prince. You know I had a life before I met you. Prince responds, well, they don't care about that. All they care about is me. Morris Day is trying to tell him, listen, brother, it's not about you. This ain't your book. This is about me with you as a part of my life. Okay, brother? Chill. Prince's licks. Now, that must be a musician thing that they call for when you meow, 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 because he was a guitarist, right? And what he did was he equated Prince's uh, capabilities to Jimi Hendrix. I mean, I already knew that he was a bad motherfucker. And he goes on to talk about how Minneapolis was not supposed to be the destination, okay? They were supposed to go down there to California, and they was looking forward to it. They were looking for the glitz and glamour of living in L.A., child. But it was a dream deferred. Because what ended up happening was they was living with their auntie, Okay, now this is the crazy part about the auntie. The auntie was not a blood relative to the mother. The auntie was married to the uncle. The uncle was Morris Day's father, Dickie Day, brother. Okay. But girl, it gets crazier. You heard me. Oh, this whole shit get crazier. So, how the situation goes is this. Morris Day and the mammy... And his two siblings was renting out the top floor. His uncle and his auntie and their six kids was living on the bottom floor. Child, that was a crowded house. God bless them. The mother had no problem with getting a job because, of course, as long as you don't have no crazy shiz on your RN license, you can get a job anywhere. Child, this is where it get kind of confusing. You might have to rewind this part a couple of times, child, because I'm still a little confused about this. So, anyway. But listen, because this shit get crazier, Okay. Uncle Spike, who is Dickie Day's, Morris Day's pappy, brother, is married to their Aunt Regina, okay? Aunt Regina and Uncle Spike living downstairs with their six kids, okay? Now, Uncle Spike 
work for this man named Mr. Joe, okay? Mr. Joe is a girl. I had to write all this down. I wrote it down anyway, but child, we had to write all these job descriptions down, okay? Mr. Joe is a hustler, a businessman, a pimp, and a drug dealer. So dig this. This way it gets a little complicated. Now, Uncle Spike ended up in a relationship with Mr. Joe's wife, okay? But Mr. Joe didn't care because he was hunching on Mars Day Mammy. And no, all this was in the dark before it came to light, okay? That shit was crazy. So I said, ooh, I like Morris Day's mammy. She was an old ambition, ambitious woman. If it was going to be this old circle of sexuality, she decided to sleep with the man that had the money. So I like her ambition, you know, her tenacity to, you know, grasp at the biggest and the baddest. Because, you know, Mr. Joe was a whole hustler, a businessman, a pimp, and a drug dealer. Okay, shout out to Morris Day's mammy. Mad respect for you, girl. Mad respect. Now that, because all that circle of hunching and deception, Moore's Day, uh, it, it ruined his trust in women and men. He explains his, he continues to want to talk about how his mother was young and ambitious. Of course she was. That's why she was fucking with Mr. Joe. So he goes on to talk about how his mother was an ambitious mover and a shaker. Child, she was out there trying to get it done. Okay? I mean, I love women like that. But sometimes what happens is your children fall by the wayside. You be so busy giving them, working 100 jobs, giving them whatever they need, child. And the, the older sister step up as the mammy, and that's what happened. His older sister stepped up as the mother to Morris Day and his younger sibling, um, Jesse. Sandy, that's her name. Sandy, the older sister, got Morris Day into a choir. Now, it was all black power choir, okay? Power to the people. They had to wear dashikis and change their name and know how to do karate. Child, but you know back in the day, everybody was kung fu fighting. I thought, I think every black man wanted to, I don't know, kick a nigga in the neck. I don't know. Anyway, Morris Day was too busy looking at the dude who had the drum sets, okay? Because he was like, I'm not here for all this black power mess. I just want to play the drums. So eventually he quit and was like, I'm out. Okay. That was Moore's day. He learned a lot of his music by ear and by um, just studying the great drummers. And this is where he references um, the drummer from Tower of Power. He would practice to perfection. Mm, child. Oof, oof, oof. And he, when he also reflected back to when he saw himself as a child, he didn't see himself as special. He thought he was a regular guy that was a beast at the drums. So mom eventually dumped Mr. Joe. I wonder why. Maybe he stopped giving her money or something because I can't see a woman that has such ambition dumping a nigga that has money and, you know, I just don't see that. Something must have happened. Something must have happened along the way. I don't know. But anyway, his mammy dumped Mr. Joe. His okay. mother, she was such a dreamer. You know, I, I, I know she's a Pisces. I know she is. But... His mother was such a dreamer that she had dreams of a mega mall. She would even write movie scripts. Now, sometimes real estate agents would entertain her in regards to her mega mall um, uh, idea, but they never got back to her. Then he referenced that mega mall, where is it? Mall of America. But his mother would say, they stole my idea. Mammy, they probably did. He goes on to talk about how Minneapolis had a very small black community, and he referenced the music. The music where the, uh, the, the one station that they had, it didn't, it didn't have differences. Because you know how some stations, they play pop. Some stations play R&B. Some stations play this, some play... The music, the station that they had, it played everybody. It did not have um, a certain type of music that they focused on. 
If it was good, it was good. And that in turn gave Morris Day a vast knowledge of different kinds of music from different kinds of people. Right. Morris Day went on also to talk about how although uh, Minneapolis at the time was like 2% black, he really didn't experience any racism. Now, he did mention that his brother or his younger brother, Jesse, did. But it wasn't so significant that uh, it would create a movement. Okay, because you know, his mammy, although, you know, she might have bad choices in men, except for Mr. Joe, except for Mr. Joe, you know, okay. But although she may have bad choices in men, I know that if something was to happen to her son, some, you know, white racist BS, oh, she would be down there with the hammer. Hit that Bama with the hammer. If you ain't from D.C., you're not going to get that joke. But hit that bama with the hammer. Here we go again where Morris Day is talking to Prince. Prince is like, you're not going to talk about how me and you met? Morris Day is like, brother, I'm going to get to it. This book is not about you. Prince again, it, I mean, you ain't interesting, bruh. Talk about me. Throughout the book, I'm only on chapter three right now, but throughout the book, He's having this back and forth with Prince all the time. And it's very telling to me. It's telling me that Prince was highly controlling. He wanted to control what people did in their music, in their private lives. Child, you're going to find out later on in their religion. That motherfucker had some control issues, child. Now we're talking about how Morris Day found himself interested in a young woman. The young woman said she wanted to go see a band down there to the Central High. Okay? Morris Day went to Northern High. They went down there to Central High. Guess who the band was there? It was that daggone Prince. Morris Day did not, you know, you know, loyally fall in love with Prince's capability, but he acknowledged how powerful of a performer and a guitar player that Prince was. He would have loved to be a part of that group. He talk about when they was in the lunchroom, because the name of this chapter is The Lunchroom, when they was in the lunchroom and he was watching uh, Prince play, he said he was thrown off because Prince had this big afro on, a turtleneck, some big bell-bottom jeans, and some pink mittens. Like, not the ones where the finger, where the tips is, you know, cut out. Child, these was like mittens, the ones with a hand like this, and he cut it right here. They was pink, big, girly mittens. Like, for I'm a grown-ass woman. I don't wear fucking mittens. Prince, okay. But Morris Day is not worried about him and, you know, the big afro with these big pink mittens on. He's more concerned about, okay, is these big pink mittens he got on? He's not thinking about, oh, that these, that he's gay. He's not thinking about that because in this area... He's talking to Prince again. Prince is like, "Do you, did you think I was gay? Morris Day was like, no, I don't think you gay. I think, you know, I, I never thought you was gay. You know, you straight as a gate. I said, ooh, that answers some questions, you know, because I believe that Morris Day is telling his truth now, okay, telling both of their truth now because it's a lot of things that's going to damage Prince Prince's reputation in his book. And I don't want you hoes to, to start a I hate Morris Day campaign, okay? Because I'm going to come back and I'm going to fight you bitches because you know I like Morris Day more than I like Prince. He said that Prince was straight as a gate. And even if he was gay, it wouldn't have mattered to him. All he cared about was his capabilities as a musician. I said, you go, boy. Remember when I told you that Morris Day wanted to be a part of Grand Central Station. It didn't matter because Prince already had a drummer who was his cousin. So it wasn't like Prince was gonna kick his cousin out on his ass for Morris Day. That wasn't gonna happen. Now, another band member was Andre. Morris Day and Andre were cool. One day they was hanging out at Morris Day's house and Andre was like, oh, brother, you, you got these drums set up like you can do something. Morris Day said, I can. I would love to be a part of your group, but I know Chad's there. Andre was like, that nigga wants some bullshit. Don't worry about him. Just come on down to, to the rehearsal and show Prince what you can do. Now, at practice, Prince was standoffish. He thought he was challenging Morris Day. Okay, hit this. Morris Day hit it without a problem. Okay. Prince ain't impressed. He's waiting for the failure. 
hit this Morse Day hit it without a problem. Because remember, Morse Day would practice endlessly with all the different groups that he loved that had like that funk background to it. Ooh. But the one thing that I love more than Go-Go is funk. Where is the funk? When you bitches gonna bring back the funk? Shit. Love me. Mm-mm. Right. Mm-mm. What's the matter with you? What's, you know, I guess Morris Day didn't bang the damn drums till his arms fell off. Prince was like, okay, call it a night. Andre say, hey, man, good job, good job. Morris Day say, I don't know. Am I in the band? What's going on? He said, yeah, bruh, you in the band. If Prince didn't like you, he would have told you he didn't like you. Okay, but who who, who speak Prince around this motherfucker except for you? I want to talk about how intense... Prince was about his music. He lived, breathed, moved music. This is where Prince chimes in, because you know he's having a conversation with Prince as he's writing the book. He was like, now thank me for the good work ethic. Morris Day was like, okay, man, thank you so much for giving me a good work ethic. You know, they talk a little bit about that Minneapolis Funk. Ooh, now let me tell you, it's such small, subtle things that a true musician would know. Because they could not afford horns in um, their band, they relied on the keyboard player to match the horns, and it worked. Now at this point, Prince chimes in and say, oh, you want to talk about our competitors? Morris Day says, these are not our competitors, these are our brothers. Prince are like, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Fuck them niggas. So Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis was a part of a band called Flight Time. They were just as good as Grand Central. Prince didn't like that. Morris Day looked at it as, okay, well, we may have times where we're at the Battle of the Bands at the same time. We may be playing at the same time at high school dances, talent shows, whatever the case may be. But they are my brothers in music. Okay, Prince, again, fuck them niggas. <clears throat> Morris Day would talk about the different songs they sang and how uh, certain members of the band Grand Central Station would sing lead. Everybody was confident in their abilities to sing lead, especially Prince's falsetto. Ooh, when I tell you when a nigga can sing higher than an orgasm, you be like, yeah! Brother, yes, do until the end of time. I truly adore you. If God one day struck me blind, your booty I still see. Now, Morris Day ain't had no problems with his capabilities as a singer until flight time. Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam went down there and found Alexander get his ass up off of that crack. Oh, Neil, or them niggas was scary. Like, oh, no, we can't accept this. And Alexander O'Neill was a big deal then, okay? Mm -hmm. O'Neill, when I think about you, my feelings can't explain why after all this time my heart still feels pain. Here goes another situation where Prince interjects and say, talk about how your mammy tried to run the group. Talk about how your mammy uh, tried to declare herself the manager. Morris Day was like, okay, hold tight. Morris Day's mother, who is a dreamer, goes on to see one of the shows. Now, just to be sure that the group is as good as they were the first time, she went to go see them ninjas a couple of more times. By the time she went to see them six, seven times, oh, she was like, you boys are good. I'm about to get y'all a deal. Now, lovers. If you have not already done so, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. Please have a good one.